Hi, in this new format um, called Conversations SAY, we're trying to create a format where um, we can have conversations, free flowing conversations based on certain topics like architecture, design, and entrepreneurship, and come up with a way that we can. Uh, create chapters that you can skip through uh, and get to some interesting information. This is the first video for that format. Uh, I'd love your feedback. So this is how it's going to work. You'll have a bar either over here or over here, you know, that is going to show you interesting things uh, that we'll discuss during the conversations. Um, and you can skip through certain segments if you're interested in like, let's say the fourth one, you skip the whole thing and go to the fourth one. It's all time stamped. So uh, this way, um, you can have a very focused uh, sort of an experience. So, and then you can sort of uh, close the video, then come back again, discover something new and exciting because uh, the people that we have lined up are very, very interesting. Uh, they've, uh, they've lived a very fulfilled life. Uh, they've, uh, they're, they're entrepreneurs, they're architects, they're designers. They're very successful people in their own right. In this first video, I spoke to Cedric Waldberger. He is uh, a very interesting chap, um, he's a serial entrepreneur, he's recently co-founded a new blockchain um, startup based in Zurich. So something really exciting about uh, Cedric is that he is somewhat of a minimalist slash essentialist, I don't know which one, they both mean different things by the way. So apparently he owns not more than 60 odd things in his life, he's given everything away. Um, you can go to his website, I'll put the link over here. I found Cedric to be very articulate, uh, very calculated, very analytical, um, very charming. It was a learning experience to sit with someone who is uh, very happy not to have a home per se. He lives all over the world. Uh, on one hand, he doesn't own anything. On the other hand, he owns a lot of companies. Uh, how ironic. Without further ado, let's get started. Yeah, hopefully, fingers crossed. This is fail safe one, fail safe two. Three, three, four, <laughs> five. Wow, this is amazing. <laughs> if we're not getting any footage out of this, then Something it's probably because a plane dropped on this building or whatever. <laughs> cool. so, so maybe let's jump all the way back to, I think I've met your wife once at a yeah, sandbox yeah, event, right? Yeah, so this is how we and connected then, once. So anyway, so I was reading that, that you were 14 when you started your first company. Uh, company. So what was that about, sir? Uh, so it was this company. We're right now at the Media Sign offices. Yeah. Um, obviously, we did not start it here, um, but beautiful offices, by the way. Yeah. I like the simplicity. Yeah. Um, I have to say, Fabian, who's my co-founder, best friend, and like uh, my business partner ever since. Okay. Um, he designed this place. It was very critical. So it has um, white floors, mm -hmm. which was something that I didn't really believe in at the beginning. But it really it add it makes all the rooms so much bigger. Mm. And we found the material that doesn't get too dirty. Like, mm. but back to uh, when I was fourteen. Yeah, I. Um, I did not want to start a company and I did not think I would start a company. Mm -hmm. um, it was 2002 and um, I had broken up with my first ever girlfriend. Okay. Um, I was devastated. Tough and love. Tough, <laughs> yeah, tough love. And uh, Fabian was a graphic designer. He knew I was, we knew each other through the Boy Scouts. Okay. Ever since I was um, seven, I was going to the Boy Scouts and right. I was in his group. He was my group leader. He's, mm -hmm. he's four years older, so he was 18 at the time. Right. And he was like, hey, we should build a website for our um, Boy Scouts group. Mm -hmm. Can you help me? I can do the designs, but I need someone who does the coding. And because right. I had spent so much time in front of the computer, he just assumed that I would uh, <laughs> probably know how to do that. And <laughs> we got to the, together on a weekend and did it and like published it and everyone uh, liked it, even though, yeah. I mean, it was a very basic website yeah. back then, but like it was cool to have a website back then. We did the same thing for like friends and family and like friends of friends. Yeah, yeah. And after about a year, I think we came up with the name Media Sign and mm. we printed business cards, even though there's no business yet. Yeah, right? <laughs> sure. We, That's what you do. <laughs> yeah, like we did websites for, I think it, they were like 500 bucks or whatever. Yeah, and like yeah. We spent our weekends and evenings on it. I was going to high school. Yeah. Um, he was still doing a full-time job as um, First as a graphic designer, mm -hmm. then later as a 
a radio host mm -hmm. and it took two or three years until we decided to actually turn it into a business all right um, and uh, we had gotten quite a few clients um, he wanted to leave his uh, job at the radio station mm -hmm. I had done a year at the Air Force um, and was about to go study at ETH and we were like mm -hmm. Why don't we start? Like, why don't we make this real? Mm. And also, we realized I've learned photography okay. from like a physics teacher I had at Ta High oh, School. Oh, that's interesting. And we realized that images were such a big part because 2002 was around the time when ADSL became widespread. So mm. suddenly, um, instead of just plain and simple HTML, you could mm. have like these background pictures. And also, when you do brochures, like you realize like it's all about the images. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we decided we wanted to have a photo studio set up uh, constantly somewhere okay. and. Uh, Having our own offices would obviously give us that opportunity. Mm. Plus, uh, back then he was working with someone who was a contestant in the Miss Switzerland um, okay. uh, contest that year. And we had supported her and a few of her friends with photo shoots and websites and stuff like right. that. And uh, three of them uh, got prizes. Okay. First prize, second prize, oh, and that's, uh, that's like some that's special lucky. prize. Yeah. So of course, being like an 18 and a 20 year old guy, we were like, oh, this gives us an opportunity to meet beautiful girls. Um, <laughs> let's let's make Screw sure we business. can do this again <laughs> next, next year. Yeah, so for a few years then yeah, we, yeah. we supported the, okay. the Miss Switzerland contest, the contestants. Well, yeah, that's, awesome. that's, how I, that's how it started. So mm -hmm. I, it was never meant to be a, a business also. Um, in order to actually buy my share in the company, mm -hmm. I took a loan from uh, Fabian Stad of, I think at the time it was 25 grand. Okay, that's which, Hefty loan. Which kind of put me at minus 25 grand at yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah. In total net worth. Um, and I mean, we didn't have a budget until I think our fifth or sixth year. Mm. And like, it was all very organic mm -hmm. and kind of like we, we were in a situation where we felt like there's a lot of pull for what we were offering. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then the next few years when I, while I was studying during the day, he was uh, selling and doing design during the day mm -hmm. and that he, in the evening at like six or seven, I would come to the office and we'd high five and I, I would work on whatever he had sold that that's, day. And sometimes that's awesome. grinding. Huh? Yeah. And, and sometimes he sold stuff that was, um, that we could actually do. Okay. And then it was a short night. I would be home by like 11. Yeah. Um, but more often than not, um, he sold something that I had no clue how to okay, achieve. That's what like, we do yeah. after. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it was, uh, it was a time when I got to, got used to having very, very little, little sleep um, yeah. but still a lot of energy like I, I got so much energy out of um, because ETH I loved ETH as mm -hmm. well but it was very technical and very theoretical yeah, yeah. and this gave me something where I could just yeah just do stuff and yeah. make stuff yeah an outlet for creativity yeah wow that's that's my thing was a little uh, actually different because my background is um, I've spent about 25 years in Pakistan so um, somehow it's actually 12 years in, in, in You're Islam. You're the 21st five years of 25, life, right? Yeah, I've, I'd never left Pakistan, but the first time I left Pakistan, I just left Pakistan. So oh. the idea was to, uh, it, it's, it's a crazy story. Like I've, I, I, I have those tendencies. Uh, when I decide that it's time, it's, it's time, you know. So uh, it's, uh, it's, it's part of those. I think a lot of creatives are, uh, they have to be tunnel visioned. You know, because if you knew how difficult these things are, you would never do it. Like that's, that's what everyone <laughs> says. Just get a job, like get a job. And I, I, I like uh, the last job I had was about six years ago. That was the last time I got paid. Uh -huh. So and uh, I was I was addicted to that lifestyle. Funny, funny fact. The longest I've ever stayed in a house in one apartment is the apartment that I'm living in right now in Switzerland. Huh. And, and that's crazy for me. It, this is like. If I didn't travel as much as I did, I would have just moved out. Just for me, if you can't change anything now, change where you live. So that was always a reaction. I need to change stuff. You change the job or you change where you live. You know, and some, somehow it gives you that feeling of constant movement, which I want. In my life, things have to move. Things have to get created. So it's just part of who I am. So uh, I did my architecture from Lahore, uh, five years. Um, for me, so, okay. Rewind. So I belong to a middle class family. In Pakistan, middle class is basically that is where you stay. And it's a, we belong to that weird category of very educated middle class people. Now I can, I can see myself acting like him, but just focusing on what's important, where the happiness is, how do you get fulfilled. For him, he had more than what he wanted. And for kids, for the kids, you're like, I don't understand because probably there was a communication gap. He couldn't tell us 
why he was happy. Uh, so anyway, fast forward, I'm like, okay, uh, I need to earn money. One job to another job to another job. Good life. Got really, really used to uh, a lot of hard work, but you get a lot of reward for that. You know, everything is sort of like very comfortable as compared to Pakistan. Yeah. Then met my wife in 2010, my wife now, girlfriend back then, and she asked me this question that changed everything. I hate and love her for that. So she said, what if Ali, uh, you've been on this survival mode for mode and this and that. And she said, okay, listen, I, I'll give you a thought. What if you could do whatever you wanted to do, would you still be doing what you're doing? Mm -hmm. And that changed everything. Yeah. So what was your answer at the time? Or what did it trigger in you? So when she asked you, um, so what's the question? What would you do if you could do anything? Do anything. Yeah. If, if money and there's no yeah. restrictions, no, there, there no, no restrictions. visas, yeah. no, no, no money, nothing. no whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So what would you do? Would you still be doing this thing? So then I started doing, uh, what I did was uh, my second day would start after 6 o'clock, 6, 7 p.m. till 2 in the morning. I started doing a lot of furniture design. I started doing hmm. a lot of graphics. I started doing arts. and. Because you realize that's your passion. Yeah, so yeah. I just to check where, because I could do these things for me, uh, so it's 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 a uh, it's just this weird thing like when you know how to do things, produce things, you can produce a lot of things. But I realize production is noise. So uh, if you just produce graphics, if you produce stuff, you just it's just noise. Just because you can't, you sh you you shouldn't. This is what I believe now. Yeah. Uh, you if you're not adding to the universe, then you might as well just keep it to yourself. You don't add, per se. If, if you're not producing something of value, if it's yeah, just... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're not adding to the discourse or to the bigger thing. Great. So uh, tell me, how did you get into investments? Like, uh, um, Yeah. Um, after starting MediaSign and then um, building it out to the point where we have probably like five or six employees, yeah. I realized that building these uh, marketing websites is not something that I would enjoy for the next few years. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the learning curve at the beginning was steep because there weren't the tools to build websites. Mm -hmm. But then once the tools were there, it became more of a like detail-oriented job sure. to like double checking in all browsers and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I was looking for something new, and I um, I started doing other projects. Um, one of them was um, a small world, which was an early social network. It was kind of the It was kind of the. Um, let's see. You want to check? Let, yeah. let me check. As no, it's all good. My, oh, yeah, my, go my ahead. Yeah. 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 Just to. He's still running. <laughs> There's only one way to check. Okay. So. Right. Back into action. So uh, let me explain what happened right now. So my phone actually just to sync the audio. Sure. The videos. Uh, so my my phone died on me. Uh, it's run out of battery. Uh, fail safe was in there. It didn't work. So <laughs> if we're not getting any footage out of this, then Something it's probably because a plane dropped on this building. <laughs> Uh, now what we're doing is we're using the laptop uh, camera. If you see uh, uh, the, the quality go down, that is because uh, I suck. I should have had another. Hello. So that's Zoom. We're actually having a video conference with ourselves right now. So <laughs> anyway, this that's is a true entrepreneur. Just yeah. making it work. So yeah, you were you were telling uh, me about your uh, investments. Yeah. So we had a quick break. Um, before that, we were talking about what I did after MediaSign. Um, long story short is I, um, I was part of several startups, one after the other. Yeah. Uh, sometimes there was a bit of overlap, but... Um, is it because, sorry, is it because uh, they were your friends or how did you get pulled into that? Scene? How did I, yeah. yeah. Well, I was always very curious, like tech startups was something that I mm. followed from uh, early on. Um, I think when I was like 12, I started reading whatever tech block was okay. around at the time. Yeah. Um, um, with these new startups, um, well, some I co-founded. Mm. It was me, friends, brainstorming. Um, others was um, more intentional. I was looking for someone um, or for a project, and I reach out through my network. Mm. And I would say, I mean, people really like the combination, or some people really like the combination of 
uh, someone that has a strong tech background, mm -hmm. has been coding for many years, mm -hmm. but also had started a business and understood how sure. to talk to salespeople and yeah. business people. Yeah. Um, and then fast forward to when I was 25. Um, at that point, I had done um, also. I also had an experience on the corporate side yeah. with Goldman, um, and I had worked in several startups. And I had realized that, uh, similar to what you said, like, would you still be doing the same thing if you were not paid for it or if mm -hmm. there were no limitations? And for me, it was very much so, except for I would probably try to do even more things in parallel. Because mm. um, I, I just love learning about this process of how do we get from, mm -hmm. I think it's one of the most creative problem solving processes that there, that there are. Mm -hmm. Like, how do we get from something that we discover in a conversation to mm -hmm. one million? And the yeah. million could be a million users, million packages shipped or a million dollars in revenue, but just from nothing to something that's kind of self-sustaining. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I really enjoy that process. And, mm -hmm. So I asked myself, how can I learn even more about that? Of course, you can read books, but mm -hmm. like that's never that's never the real thing, sure. right? Sure. You can go to um, yeah. go do a master's in entrepreneurship, but yeah. like I figured, there must be a way to learn it in the real in like in the real world. And mm -hmm. so far, I have been doing one company after another. Some did well, some went back to zero. Mm -hmm. And I realized like investing in startups would give me that opportunity. I'd be fully invested. Mm -hmm. um, I would do it very early on where I could help founders, but it would not be me in the driver's seat. Mm. And that would allow me to do it in parallel. Yeah. And so Fabian and I, we decided to start Tenderloin Ventures with that idea. Mm -hmm. um, put money together in a pot um, and invest in 10 companies mm -hmm. to yeah. diversify the risk, to not all have all eggs in one basket, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. have about 10 companies. Mm -hmm. Now our assumption was seven of, or let's say six or seven will go back to zero. Mm -hmm. Um, two or three, we get our money back, mm -hmm. and then there's one that at twenty x at yeah. least. Okay. Right. We started looking for uh, cases. Mm -hmm. um, I had lived in a number of places before that. We decided to only look in Berlin and Zurich, mm -hmm. or Switzerland and Germany. Let's put it that way, because yeah. um, it was kind of uh, more feasible to, to go back and forth between the two places all yeah. the time, not that costly. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what we did. And the first case that we found was a case in Zurich that was actually uh, started by two friends of mine. One thing that looking back, I think has been true with all our investments, even though it was not an investment thesis yeah. is like, we always try to do positive things mm. and mostly consumer stuff. So sure. stuff that makes people happy, makes them laugh or um, uh, makes them have a more fulfilled sex life, mm -hmm. uh, let them travel more. Mm -hmm. um, so there's another company with luggage that I'm invested in okay. or um, help people connect more with Yodel. That's a social network that we're invested yeah, in. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Um, is it, is it still, it's, it's still there? Yeah, it's still there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Still running, still growing. Right. Um, it's crazy in Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. um, okay. About one and a half years ago, it started growing there and uh, that's wow. I think the main market now. Okay. Right now. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah, so that's how that, so that's how that happened. And then my role was probably like one third of my time. I was looking for new startups, going mm. to startup events and like looking at pitch decks and stuff like that. And two thirds of my time, I tried to invest into our existing portfolio companies. Yeah. And that could be anything like a Morana. Sometimes I was, uh, I was at their office helping ship packages. If we had a big day, like I, mm. I would go by in the evening and help, uh, package stuff. Mm. So. That gave me an opportunity to learn in 10 different companies over the sp time span of about three or four years. Um, I'm still active with most of them, mm -hmm. um, but in a much, much reduced role now that I've... Um, about two years ago, the itch just became too big. I felt yeah. like my, my learning curve was flattening mm -hmm. and I wanted to do go back um, on the founder side and, uh, and start something myself and prove that I've learned something. So this is Definity. So yeah, I, I co-founded or founded three companies, Centask, mm -hmm. which we're right now shutting down. Yeah. Um, or selling off, it's not quite clear. So, yet. by the way, yeah. uh, so let, let, let's. This is the time to pitch for that, actually. Centask. So, yeah, Centask. Yeah, so please go for it. Yeah, so Centask. Um, the the idea for Centask originated when I was involved with these ten different companies mm -hmm. and and also like some private activities. And what I realized is like there's no good place to track your priorities and tasks. Mm. Um, I'm a huge fan of Zana and Trello, and uh, I tested 48 different tools. Okay. What I've missed is that all these tools are great to work with your internal team, mm -hmm. but they're not very flexible to work with outsiders. Mm -hmm. And what I've seen is like, as soon as you have more than one project, like that ruins your workflow because um, back then, like 
two companies would use Asana, three yeah. would use Trello, one would use just email, one would use post-its and send me a picture. <laughs> um, very messy process because then I had chaos in my yeah. head again, right? Yeah. And I, I'm not someone who does well with that. Like I'm always looking for structure mm -hmm. first mm -hmm. and then execution. Mm. And so I was looking for a way and all these 48 tools didn't offer it. And so I, um, I went back to, um, I started coding myself again. Okay. Like that was actually one of the uh, things that made it very uh, enticing yeah. to me. Like I just wanted to get my hands dirty, so mm. to say again. Mm. And uh, built the first prototype, hired a developer. Uh, we built the first for like very minimal version, mm. showcased it to a few friends and, uh, and companies that I've worked with. They kind of liked the concept, but it was not quite, it was not fully built out reliable enough mm -hmm. to track all your tasks mm -hmm. and then I decided to raise some money and uh, put some money in myself and, um, and build it out yeah and then we we put the team together about one and a half years ago okay or maybe a year and two months mm -hmm. and we recently um, decided to uh, either pass it on to someone else mm -hmm. or shut it down just because my I co-founded two other companies glimpse and definity mm -hmm. And uh, right now, it just looks like Definity is the one that I need to spend my time on. It's mm -hmm. by far the the one where I get challenged the most. Mm -hmm. um, I have the most fun. Like we have a very smart team. I, I learn a lot mm -hmm. every day just by sitting in the same room with them. Mm -hmm. um, and so it became harder and harder to justify spending time on on Send Task, mm -hmm. which is a pity because I now I'm back in the same situation. I have moved back. I've moved back to some of these uh, other productivity mm -hmm. tools. Um, but it just, yeah, they have this issue that they're made for one team and one team only. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so, yeah, I, uh, so if anyone wants to take over Sentask, please reach out and uh, get in yeah. touch. Yeah. So uh, what sort of uh, reach out is this? Is it, how does that work? Yeah, so um, let's start at um, your profile. Okay. So ideally, you are a product person. Mm -hmm. um, maybe ideally, you're a group of like three people, like one business, one product, one tech or something like sure. that. Um, I think there's a few improvements that need to be made on the product side in order to like really scale it um, to, to millions of users. Mm -hmm. um, and in terms of a buyout, I mean, yeah, I, I feel some obligation in, uh, towards my investors to get their money back. Like mm -hmm. I, I don't, mine was like money that I'm happy to pay for, for the learning curve, sure. but um, at some point we should get some money back but mm -hmm. even more than about the money what I care about is like can you show me that you have a sustainable way to support the business over the next 24 months mm -hmm. um, because I, what I don't want to what I don't want to happen is I pass the company on to someone else mm -hmm. the product and we tell all the users that there's going to be continuous support and then two months after there's a sudden shutdown yeah yeah right. Uh, in terms of team, um, there's a few team members that, I mean, everyone right now, some people have joined me at Definity, mm. others have found other uh, work, but I know some people are very excited about Sentask, so they will mm. probably come back and, and help work on mm -hmm. on the tool. There's pretty good documentation as well, so it's okay. not impossible to work on it with a new team. Um, and it's pretty clean, it's a mean stack application, so okay. all JavaScript, yeah. um, okay. which is something that can be... Yeah, you can find developers for that mm -hmm. um, pretty much everywhere. It's not like Erlang or any of these. So, uh, so based on that, I went back to my roots. So there was a lot of thinking. So we went back to architecture and design. That's what I loved. I was always into design. I was the design leader in the companies that I was working with. So I knew how to take an idea or come up with an idea, take that idea, make it workable, make it into competition, uh, pitch, uh, and, and win a competition and, and, and then sustain the business through that competition and then go out and look for it's like we were the, <laughs> the, uh, the, the hunter pack in our company so we would always be hunting and bringing in food <laughs> yeah so we would win a big project like a, a big mall would come in so a lot of these very interesting projects I had the, the uh, good fortune of uh, being part of I'm like oh by the way Michael I love the guy. Sorry, Michael. <laughs> so, uh, he's like he's he's basically he's been my mentor. Yeah, he's he's taught me how to play it safe. Mm -hmm. So if you know how to play it safe, then uh, you uh, you can't go wrong. It's that's a fail safe that you must have a plan B. Uh, in thinking, uh, even in architecture, you should design the easiest thing before you design the the difficult thing. So if the difficult thing is not working, then you go back to the easier thing and decide why it's not working and how far are you willing to go. Mm -hmm.
So if you don't have that baseline, you can't you can't start from here. You have to start here, make something, and then try to move as further away from the baseline as possible. Anyway, anyway, and so then what? It sounds like you're still doing interesting. Stuff. So I realized from the first one that people want. It's too technical for a lot of people to understand what this is. So instead of doing something for a smaller niche, you do something for a larger niche. Create a bigger product, create that market that you want, and then introduce a smaller product, which might be a niche product. So I need to create something which was bigger. So that was also part of uh, one of the aspects of the thesis that I did. And the whole idea was going back to the thesis, which was the education platform. That there are four ways that you can actually. uh gauge or capture expertise that everyone has mm -hmm. uh and we were, we wanted to use blockchain to get okay. that so you first of all you capture then uh you first of all you connect then you capture then you transform and then you visualize so these are the four steps okay. so uh Can you say them again. So you capture, you connect, you connect, uh, you transform, transform, and then you visualize. Visualize. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about all of those. What they mean? Yeah. So it it means different things in different contexts. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. So basically, what happens is, uh, I believe everyone has expertise in certain things, mm -hmm. not in the same way or form as we imagine expertise to be. So I was calling it air quotes individual expertise. It could be anything. It mm -hmm. could be something that you can add value to. It could be something. It would could be your two cents in a conversation. It could be something that you know where you can get something from. So how can you connect the right people together where that you create this right uh, uh, situation where that it's always through a connection that you can get to that expertise. Mm -hmm. So you have to create this accident for two people to come in mm -hmm. and that question to be raised and that answer to be needed. So you're creating a marketplace for. for this uh experience sharing ex yeah experience yeah. sharing uh -huh. then then you uh capture it so once and uh, and a bit of information goes out it just goes out in the ether and then what you lose it and every single time there's a lot of repetition in architecture so when i get a house to design i would sit down or a building whatever i would sit down i would go through the same steps every single time with the same people sitting across the table a new client comes and you have to go through the same process every single time it's not bad it's inefficient so i do believe there are a lot of things that can be done without repeating the same process mm -hmm. on the back on the flip side what i believe is once a piece of information goes out it should be retained somewhere so we were creating this third operator a chamber the idea was to hold everything in this chamber So that was the third operator that we want to, wanted to build for education, where seven institutes were plugged into. So you were creating this massive information chamber, where all these guys, whatever they were doing, it was always being re retained and somehow utilized. It was always active and it was growing and growing. And so that was the idea. That was the idea behind this. So you connect. Uh, you uh, you connect. Uh, yeah, visualize. how can you visualize an information so uh, visualization means different things for different people right so for us the visualization part was to somehow make that thing useful f for other people through that third uh, operator as okay. we were calling it so that was the visualization and then transformation was when it actually became useful for the people okay so this was the loop that i sort of came up with in the end so this was this is the last part so like okay how do you do this how do you change education yeah it was pretty tough and rough when you uh, talk to the swiss about changing education from pakistan they're like I, i think we have a good system that works <laughs> so you look around things work you know so that was pretty pretty interesting no actually uh, i had a very uh, uh, good professor uh, he's a crazy guy in a good way armen that's a, sh a shout out uh he's uh, he's uh, swiss italian and uh, the guy came up to me and he said just before uh my first semester break and he said ali come here it's like do you know about bitcoin and i'm like yeah man i know about the dark web and bitcoin this was like i didn't know much about mm -hmm. it it's like okay i'm going to send you a, f a couple of things it's a, it's a white paper by satoshi do you know satoshi has to know it's a white paper and i'm like oh fuck sounds so boring It's like so. The, you have these two days. Go and have a look at this blockchain. 
Bitcoin. Well, that's a smart man. It's a very smart yeah, yeah. And then yeah. he just got that thing into my head. And I came back and suddenly I was like, I just don't understand anything anymore. It was that Matrix moment, you know? When I watched Matrix for the first time, I was like, <laughs> mind blown, like, wow, you know? So, and then this Bitcoin was like, it wasn't, it's still not very clear what a blockchain is, to be honest. It's getting clearer, but it's, it's still up in the air. It's like, uh, I've heard some very good definitions, and I've heard some very weird definitions, and then there's this wishful thinking of what I believe it could be but w what do you think what is the blockchain yeah. because you're working on it yeah i think there's so many layers to explain that and i think the problem why we all perceive it to be something co more complicated than the internet mm. and more sophisticated is that if i ask you what's the internet you mm. would say it's a technology that enables email and web browsing and skype and mm -hmm. right and so that's how we perceive technology it's yeah. where they have an impact or an interaction with our day-to-day -day lives mm. You wouldn't say, oh, it's this uh, incredibly complicated protocol that either UDP or TCP and then packets are being um, routed through the border control protocol. And mm. um, and that's how it's it replicates data and how it's redundant and da -da -da. Mm. like that's all that's all under the hood and sure. kind of we just we don't even appreciate it yeah. uh, a lot. I think with the with the blockchain space, we're now. I think within the next two years, we're probably going to see first applications. Mm -hmm. I think that's my um, timeline. Like, there's a lot of interesting infrastructure projects mm -hmm. coming online now, like mm -hmm. EOS, Dfinity is working on it. Mm -hmm. um, there's a few more. Ethereum is working on more scalability. And I think once we have more solid um, infrastructure, then mm -hmm. it will be easier for people to launch cool applications on top of it mm -hmm. that will have an impact. Um, now, what will those applications be? Um, we've talked about this offline uh, for quite a bit already, and I did a couple uh, episodes on the on the Flock project. Um, I'm very passionate about what it can do for governance, what mm. it can do for identity, what it can do for uh, education, because I think all three are somewhat connected. Mm -hmm. um, those are like the fields that, to me, just seem like it needs to happen there. Like, mm. there's no mm. way there's not going to be... Uh, blockchain is not going to have a huge impact mm. now whether that's going to be in the next two years or the next 10 years that's always hard to judge plus I don't think Switzerland will be the first place to overthrow their current education system sure. and replace sure. it with something blockchain right yeah. um, but once we do see it in places like Estonia is very forthcoming yeah. or uh, there's a few South American places that invest heavily or Dubai actually Dubai mm -hmm. is, wants to become the city yeah. that runs on a blockchain right? yeah 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 so it's going to be an interesting time to see what's going to happen, how it's going to happen, and uh, also what kind of weaknesses we discover along mm -hmm. the way. Maybe we can come up with an idea of uh, how we can do the blockchain on, on education, have a, something concrete that we can actually go and present yeah. while we're going there. And um, uh, Because, uh, you know, the Future Foundation in Dubai is basically an organization that was set up by His Highness. And the whole idea was that... Uh, it was the first 3D printed building in, in the world probably. Huh. So they 3D printed the whole thing. So Dubai is very, very, very progressive in that respect. Uh -huh. The ruler, right from there, the leadership is very progressive. Yep. Because they, they realize like there is no sustainable business model. Uh, you have to sort of innovate and you have to be on the, at the cutting edge yep. and get the best people in. Yeah, so uh, maybe we can also make a call here, like if mm. someone wants to, uh, so we have this idea of like identity connected to education um, and um, you can check out my previous video um, to, to get all the details, but the idea is to separate, or I believe that education can be the, the big equalizer of the 21st century. Mm. If we manage to give everyone in the world the same uh, equal opportunities to educate themselves mm. from an early age on, and then we create a more equal mm -hmm. world, and I think that's always that's something mm -hmm. we all want, right? Mm -hmm. It means less war, less misunderstandings. Um, and if someone um, is also passionate about then just about that, and just reach out to us, um, I think this could um, potentially once the Definity or any other platform mm -hmm. is there, I think mm -hmm. um, it's all a matter of like coming up with the concept, how does this actually work, yeah. and then convincing someone to give it a test run sure, sure. I think it's, so it's you need to have a laboratory condition for this yeah. right now because uh, education itself it's it's like uh, uh, it's it's one of those uh, protected things you know and uh, it's 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 really like 
it's it's you would have a lot of eyes uh, on you if you were to disrupt that industry and for me i think the personally this is what i believe and i might be completely wrong here and i'm i'm not ashamed of being wrong but i think uh, uh pakistan is a very interesting country here uh because uh, there's a like a huge uh, percentage of the population is below 30 it's a new upcoming country so there's a lot of energy there there are a lot of people who are coming up with with all of this technology yeah. so uh but what we realized is uh, through looking at history in pakistan if you want to for certain institutions uh, or organizations a top down approach is better than a bottom up approach mm-hmm. what i mean is uh, instead of in this case uh, if you start uh, to change education from uh, from a very early age primary uh, early uh, not primary like uh, we call it nursery uh, uh, level it's going to be very difficult for it to take shape and if you start from the masters level for example you will have a much bigger impact in a much shorter time and you can actually see what the impact yep. is and so and people are already conscious that so they can make exactly. statements about um, how it works out for them as well yeah yep. yeah and i think the impact is going to be very real uh, because you'll see like okay, because people at the, the masters level are not doing are not studying because their parents tell them to yep. they they generally want to make something out of their lives Uh, and this is what i did and uh, for me i had to wait 10 years because mm-hmm. so when uh, you leave money on the table and you do your masters you know that you want something out of it yeah uh, so and and that is why i just thought like a lot of people like me they don't even have to come here or africa pakistan uh, india uh, south east east asia like these are the big markets uh, uh, like there's a lot of money being uh, being invested into education i was telling you like what we trying to do with our other platform banjaiga it's a it's a tech platform for uh, for architects contractors building material suppliers so we trying to have all the information on one platform so people can get their services and before we getting the services we realized there was no documentation being done in that industry so it's a 6 billion us dollar industry and nobody has gone in if you ask if you can t- uh, if you can give me one person who knows uh anything about the number of uh, local vendors uh, uh uh working in uh in selling uh tiles for example in one small city i'd give you everything so th- no one even the government doesn't know these numbers so what we did was we we documenting everything from scratch it's a huge task but of course uh, uh someone has to do it and so with these unskilled labor are going into uh, these uh, uh, certain industries for example tile layers electricians these guys they don't have any diplomas they don't have any trainings so what we are trying to do now is we're reaching out to a lot of people and we're trying to do something in that space yes. and yeah. so it's it's all like everything that we're doing right now it's somehow to do with giving back and uh, a few years ago someone told me something and i i really hold it close to me and they said like giving should hurt giving should hurt giving should hurt it should you have to piss blood if you're giving if if this is your life if this is your calling then you have to reach down deep and then this is what you have to do and not everyone is going to do it because huh. you know but somewhere down the line your incentive is going to run out and for that if you detach it's all about incentive systems even in education we can have a very interesting conversation about that Uh, how we can add incentives in education for that the decentralized education model to work you need to have an an uh, extrinsic uh, uh reward system mm-hmm. that has to uh, sort of push people but we've realized nobody wants to do certifications for for plumbing in pakistan because you don't get your money's worth after 6 months nobody's going to give you extra money just because you have a certification yeah why do it So we created a platform where we're saying okay if you have this you're going to get work. And suddenly they're like are you sure it's like no I'm, we're not promising anything but this the platform is promising something. Yeah. So it's it's just that loop. So f- for me that that if you switch that that reward thing off where uh you have to measure your fulfillment in some other currency instead of money. instead of the 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 thing what could that be what wakes you up every morning and say listen okay so this is what i want to do like you can get a job here and you get paid much more mm-hmm. and it's so it's so easy like someone tells you what to do again 
but it might not be fulfilling. Yeah, of course not. Like for someone like for people like us, we are restless souls. And mm -hmm. the thing is, yeah, we are like you. You can't even the things that we're doing. We get uh, uh, really fidgety after a little while if yeah. if they're not moving. And and yeah, I think uh, yeah, we have to keep uh, moving on and uh, define what happiness is. And just so we can uh, make sure that we get the spelling right, uh, Banjaiga. Okay, Banjaiga. Okay. Banjaiga. B a n j a i g a dot com. It's a Pakistan specific platform, by the way. So uh, for all the people in Pakistan, if you want anything for the construction industry, if you want to buy building materials, if you want to hire an architect, if you want to uh, get contractors, you can go there. You can go online. We have an offline service as well. We have a service team. You can call them up. We we basically match make. We try to get the best people in the market and then match to the to the demand. Okay. So it's a, it's a very simple thing on the on the front, but in the cool. at the back, we're documenting it's the market system. Right? It's a marketplace. Yeah. Ali, yeah. um, great having you. Super interesting nice to hear about your background and yeah. uh, super impressive. Perfect. Maybe what is uh, one thing you would like to leave with the audience? Yeah, it depends on uh, what sort of an audience do you have. Let's say someone who came here and uh, watches this because they, they're coming to my Inside Definity channel, so they okay. want to hear about blockchain topics yeah. in general. Okay. I think uh, uh, blockchain is understood as, uh, as a very exciting space everywhere, all across the world. So you need to get out of that, uh, uh, that ge uh, geographic uh, location thinking. So uh, even in Pakistan right now, the government is investing in huge startups for the same thing. So everywhere, all across the world, diversity is something that you should definitely look at. Like, uh, and, uh, and yeah, just get people from all across the world, put them in the room and talk about crazy stuff. And, and I'm sure like, you know, uh, something exciting can happen. What about you? Leave something on the table for people who are who designers, who are architects, who want to see that there is future beyond just being a graphic designer or a, or a web well, first I was going to say, if you're interested in how blockchain could change education and you're so passionate about that, that you want to have an impact, uh, reach out to us. Um, we have plenty of ideas. We need more people to help us uh, yeah. move forward. Um, if I was going to uh, talk to architects, designers, and so on, um, I think blockchain and cryptocurrencies and all the... Um, moving pieces in that ecosystem are going to have an impact on almost all our lives. So if you haven't yet figured out the way that is fun and um, figure out the way for yourself to invest into knowledge into that space, whether it's buying a few coins and then following it or buying a book or coming up with a thought experiment of how it could improve your industry. Like that would be my, my ask from your audience. Awesome. Great, Cedric. Cool. Thank you, All sir. right, man. <laughs> I will talk soon. Yes.